Hello friends, and welcome back. So, um, there have been a lot of comments about system tuning on the Midas M32C, so I figured I would make a few dedicated videos just showing how I do that. Uh, basically the way the matrices are set up and also uh, channel EQ and just how I dial a system in. So, um, I don't know if you can see this or not, but this is a pretty typical kind of gig for us. Um, we're in a golf ballroom kind of thing with high boomy ceilings and a lot of hard surface. So um, this is how I like to dial in the PA system. So um, the first thing that I like to do is just bring up, I use this same Bruce Hornsby tune all the time. Um, so what I like to do is I like to listen to the subs and solo first. Um, so actually before we do this, let me just tell you how this is routed. So um, the the auxiliary input channel here that is my DJ line um, hits the main left right. The left right hits four matrices. So everything feeds left right, then it feeds four output matrices. So matrices. So matrix one, two is my left and right, three is sub, and four is a video send. So the way that I like to do this first is we're just gonna listen to the sub send in solo. So we're just gonna feed this. And then what I like to do is bring in my low pass filter to tighten everything up. And then I'm gonna bring my high pass filter in. And then I'll see where these wanna ring in this room. There we go, so that just took all the boxiness out. Now I can, because I made such a drastic EQ cut, I can hit the channel or the matrix a little bit harder. So we're doing a pretty big cut at 50 and a pretty huge cut at, we'll say 85 to 90. But the subs are nice and tight. So the next thing that I wanna do is just make sure that sound is coming out of both of them. Um, on these RCF subs that we use, they have a little crossover filter on the back that can sometimes be engaged depending on how you wanna run the PA. So those are coming out at the same level, which is good. Um, so then we, I like to take this out and then I'll bring my left right in. Um, so in this stage, I just want to do basic tonal things. So this is very harsh in the high and low mid. So we'll do a cut at, let's see, 200, 400. And then we'll do some generic kind of high cuts up in the crispy frequencies. So I can take this, we're gonna take our aux down, and now I'm gonna put my matrices at unity, and I'm gonna slowly bring the subs in. Subs out, we'll bring subs in. So the trick with this is I don't like to hear the subs. In my mind, this column of PA should be one thing. Um, oh, you know what we should do also that we didn't? Let's just make sure the subs are in phase. Sometimes it sounds better if you flip the subs. I mean, you know, I'm not doing anything crazy with smart or anything, so I mean, I'm just using my ear. So the next thing, um, this matrix output PA, or the, so this is my PA output on my, my left and right. Um, this is just what, what sounds flat to my ear. Despite the judicious amount of EQ here, this is what sounds flat to my ear. So the next thing that I like to do is just bring my vocal mic up. So I, I check this, we have uh, SM86s with this band. So I'll, I try to do a condenser microphone so I can get the most high frequency. I'll bring my channel up to Unity, let's see. Uh, this is Midas console. So you know the interesting thing about the M32C is um, you set your preamps like an old school Midas. So generally I, I kind of put them at that, at 33 
that's like a you know a solid one o'clock two o'clock kind of position um, which is kind of cool that that is a major difference between the x32 and the m32 is is preamp positions um, the preamps are different in those consoles so you do want to run your midas preamps a little bit hotter because they do have that old school Midas thing. Um, so I'm just going to bring my VCA up. This is just VCA one, two, two, two. Hey, yep, yep. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Um, so as we bring that up, you can already tell that it's feeding back a little bit. So all we have to do here is on our channel EQ, I'm going to bring my high pass filter up. Two, two, two. Yep, yep. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. I like to start it at around 200 kind of thing. Um, and then once we've got that, leaving the channel EQ flat. Um, we're gonna go into our main left right for the sake of illustrative purposes we'll put the RTA on um, and I like to basically just turn my back to the speakers here and see where they want to ring two 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 bring our channel okay one and a half two 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 Resonant frequency at 800. So now that we have our high frequency cuts, we can go into our, our channel EQ, and there's still some resonant ring there, so we can take our low mid, and now we can just do some big sweeps here, which a lot of people have been commenting on previous videos about the amount of EQ used, um, and also the lack of using uh, something like Smart to uh, listen to the room. Uh, I don't think you really need this or you don't need to do that. It's, it's a lot simpler than that. I think um, one of the issues with um, graphical representations of equalization is you can't, you're, you're looking, you're mixing with your eyes and you're not really mixing with your ears. So make those big cuts like that and then your mics won't feed back because if you're standing in front of a speaker stack like this and you are not very good at using a microphone, um, so you're giving a speech kind of like this, you can get away with way more gain like this before it starts to, to feed back. So with our generic channel EQ set, when the singer comes, we can obviously tailor that to their voice. And then we can go back into our matrix here and see even with that EQ, if we want to make some additional cuts. So there's still, so this is just a more broad parametric. So I can really get crazy with the gain here standing right in front of the speaker stack. So if we go out into the middle of the dance floor, you can hear that it still sounds very nice. And we don't have any feedback issues. So even if we're turning off access to the PA, um, with an SM86, you do have a hypercardioid pickup pattern. So if you're facing the PA like this, this is uh, not a very good scenario to be in because of the uh, back end of the capsule. Okay, so now that we've cut that all up, bring some music back in. So on program music, where we are missing a little bit of the high end there, but uh, as far as uh, it sounds with my voice, um, it's still a little bit uh, crispy on that channel. So I can take my channel EQ down just a little bit. Cool. And that's a good place to start. So I will copy and paste this EQ uh, to my other vocal channels, so when the band gets here, um, we can use this as a good starting point. It, it's going to be pretty close, and then we can we can tailor it because um, the the band is going to stand on the stage and almost parallel with the speaker. So the subs are on the floor, the speakers are up in the air, but they're going to be pretty much on plane with the singers. So that is going to add a little bit of feedback issues. So we we can knock that out. But this is a good starting place for the uh, for the PA. So I will check back in with you at sound check. I do. Yeah, 
will you give any, uh, just keep, hang on the low B for me. Go up the neck. hysteria. Killer. Thank you. How's your ears? some weird EQ on this thing. Okay. All right, let's get some sax. Anything honky you can give me? from Get Lucky. Kick drum, please. Yeah, can you play along with that? Cool. OK, 
Scanner, when you get a chance, can you get the uh, snare drum, please? Tom one. Okay.
guys are amazing. Yeah. yeah. You want to run something with Wayne? You want to do something? Sure. Something with drums, bass, and sax. <laughs> to make you sound like an angel. you guys in front of the PA with mics. Thanks. Love you both. <laughs> That's right, baby. Yeah. All right. So we just finished sound check. I haven't had a chance to uh, get the keyboard player or the guitar player yet, but those are, uh, as things go, those are pretty easy since both of them are DI'd. Guitar is Kemper and uh, the keyboard is obviously DI'd. So um, here is just a breakdown of what is on stage. Kick drum is a Beta 91. Snare drum 57 toms are E604s. Here's placement on those. Um, the uh, hi-hat mic is uh, AT. I don't know what this model is, but I just have it on a Cardellini clamp, um, which if you are not hip with those, check out Film Tools. Those things are awesome. Um, keys using a radial USB DI base world over here just a radial JDI sax has got a 98 on it here's our rack set up and if you want to check out a little bit more of a detailed video on the rack video you can check the link in the upper right hand corner of your screen and then here's the room So I don't know what you saw um, with the, uh, the GoPro cameras, but we've got a pretty interesting roof up here. So we've got some wiggle lights up there and then they have these big cavernous pockets up here. So looking at the PA, we're pretty much on par. I 
can't really tell as far as height goes, but there's a lot of hard surface in this room. So um, I, if you're wondering why there are judicious amounts of EQ on things, uh, that is why. So we'll see what this sounds like once the band gets started, but sound check is okay. It's a little boomy. Um, it's be just because it's an empty room, but that is certainly one of the, the uh, benefits of having the subs on a matrix. So uh, perhaps we will check in later, or perhaps this is the end of the video. I will see how much time I have. So it's the end of the video. Thanks for stopping by. If it's not, we'll see you later.